In the last class, we discussed about the traditional nature of the appraisal. As you know, what is the performance appraisal? We already discussed in the last class. So, I will try what is the performance appraisal? What is the appraisal? That means the evaluation of the performance of the employee. That means you can see the task, the job which has been assigned by the organization. So that uh, job, that task, uh, evaluate or appraise by the organization. That means the employees are doing well or not. If they are making so whenever they are required the developing or the they need to improve their performance. So we have the two factors uh, in the performance appraisal. The first one, the traditional method, we already discussed uh, in the last lecture. So today we will discuss about the future-oriented matter. In the future-oriented matter, the five methods include management by objective, assistance and tool, psychological appraisal, 360-degree feedback, and the human resource accounting method. So let's start with the MBA. Management by objective. In the MBO, managers and the employees should sit together and they identify, they formulate the plan, organize, and communicate organization. So, in which in the management by objective, basically manager and employee discuss about the plans of the organization that should have to be completed. Uh, within the two or three months. Okay. So in this the manager identify about what are the objective that should be that can be achieved by the employees and on the basis of the objective of the job is less given to the employee. That means the uh, they provide the responsibility to the employee. So in which they will check uh, because the, what are they will comparison. After the goal setting, after the task dividing, after that, uh, they will compare the result. Compare the result with the, uh, their expectation, what they expected from uh, their employees and what uh, result they have given to their organization. So, over regular touch point meetings, the manager and employee discuss the progress made. That means the on the behalf of that, they will periodical review of, of the result and the expectation. Employer can then use this measure of progress as a guide to managing the contribution level of the employee. That means we know for uh, creating any organization, for build a, any organization or any productivity, because we know the productivity of the organization is depend on the employees of the organization. So they will compare their cost they they have put for their employees and what are the contribution level of the employee for the organization goals consumer. While useful in determining rates of productivity, this process usually emphasizes career oriented and tangible goals. Therefore, the intangible aspects of an employee's performance, such as their interpersonal skill or job commitment, or work ignore. So, basically, understand the NBO management by objective has the basically the four points. Basically, the uh, goal decided, plan, goal decided, comparative, and the review. Basically, in which the management decided the objective and employee has to do the work and management by objective is basically the process of achieving the goal of the organization that is decided by the management and what are the contribution level of the employee that is compared by the manager 
factors, they will check the comparison label between the what they expect from their ample and what the responsibility and how that responsibility convert in the result basically that is known as the MBO. So this is the basic concept of the MBO. We are to learn this method as, as a MBO. That is the management by objective. But now you hear the another hand of uh, this uh, you can see this model. Have you heard about it? So basically, the another name is the right P P R I D E basically. So what is the full form of the right? Anyone have any idea about it? What is the full form? Okay, let's show it. I will explain. So, right means basically the P. P is stand for the performance. R is stand for result. I is stand for individual. D and G is in the development. E is evaluation. So, basically, right is the stands for performance, result, individual, and development evaluation. So this is the another name. So don't be confused if in the exam uh, this module is uh, will be asked by the another name because MBO is also uh, known as the pride basically. So basically uh, the meaning of the MBO is management by objective and you can say setting the goals for all the manager activities is known as the management by objective. So let's understand what the process what are the steps included in the management by objective the first is started from to define organization goals after defining organization goals uh, define ambulance objectives after that continuous monitoring performance and the progress then performance evaluation after then the providing feedback and then performance appraisal so next this goal what is the defining uh, organization goals. So we uh, know that so we must start any work. Firstly, the goals is required because uh, without deciding the goal, we cannot decide the criteria level. We cannot decide the level of the achievement for any job, for any organization, for any company basically. So setting objective is not only a difficult to success of any company. That means we have to start any uh, organization, established organization, business, because it is a uh, organization goals is play a very critical role for uh, success of any organization or any company. But it also serves a variety of the purposes. Of course, it is not like that we only the organization has the one of type of the purpose or the objective. Maybe they have the lots of the variety of the purposes of the objective. It needs to include several different types of manager in certain goals. So different types of manager, that means maybe the top level manager, medium level manager, lower level manager, they will sit together and uh, they will uh, take the also the uh, discussion, they also discuss with the ambulance and setting the goals. Why they need to discuss with the employees because they, according to their employee skills, their capability, their knowledge, they will decide the goal basically. The objective set by the supervisor are professional. That means the supervisor will decide the objective, and that is also based on the interpretation and evaluation what is what the company can basically and should achieve within a specific time because we know. There are two types of the goals, the short-term goals and the long-term goals. That uh, capability, uh, that is the organization uh, one, this type of this system, what their company will do and how they can achieve uh, the organization objective within the specific time. Defining the rules of the organization, that is a defined ample objective. It is a very necessary because once the employees are briefed about the general objective plan, 
the strategy to follow the manager and start working with their subordinates on establishing their personal objective. Basically, they work for their personal. They should have to objective what are they have to generalize, they have to explain about the objective, their plan, and what type of the strategy they can follow. So after that, the manager can do the work for the other process with their subordinate and establish their personal objective basically. This will be a one-on-one -on -one discussion where the subordinates will let them know manager about the targets and which goal they can accomplish within a specific time and with what resources. So why that's why in the MBO the manager need to discuss one-to-one -one discussion with their subordinate so they can easily the manager should have the proper knowledge about their employees objective. So according to that they will fix the plan they can decide the target and which goals they can accomplish within a specific time and what type of the resources uh, they can use they can uh, they can then share some tentative tools about which goal the organization or department can find feasible so that's why that is the reason he uh, basically these are the tentative objective that uh, these are the tentative tools which basis the goals of the organization or department can be uh, they can find the feasible okay so that means uh, until objective is also the necessary deciding by the manager after the and define the ample objective the next step is a continuous monitoring performance and progress so continuous monitoring performance and the progress is necessary because Without monitoring, uh, monitoring, the manager should know about their employees' performance. If there are any making any mistake happen by their employees, so how can they analyze about uh, the what type of the training and development is required for the particular level of the employee? What are the criteria they need to require the training? and all what type of the skills required for that particular athlete. So that's why the management by objective approach is necessary for increasing the effectiveness of the manager. It is particularly essential for monitoring the performance and progress of each employee in the organization. So that's why the, for improving the uh, productivity, for improving the progress and the performance of each employee that's why the continuous monitoring performance and progress is required by the manager for their employees also. After that, the performance evaluation. Within the MBO framework, the performance is achieved by the participation of the manager council. That means all the manager and those who are working in the organization who will participate in this concept in this ambul uh, performance appraisal method by using the ambul method. After that, within the ambul framework, the performance review is achieved by the participation of the manager concern. They will evaluate the performance on which basis, like uh, if any uh, performance is making, if uh, they require skills, if they require some progress, any development, any training, if they require some particular area of the export skills, so they will work on that further respect. After that, providing statement. The management by objective approach the most essential step is a continuous feedback on the result and the objective as it enables the employee to break and make corrections to their actions basically because every employee should have a right to know about uh, about their uh, you can see the performance their results so feedback feedback is the only the one thing that can be um, they can collect through the form they can uh, uh, directly they can uh, collect from their manager so in which basically employees they can make correction to their action. If they are thinking that this, uh, these are the skills are required for this, uh, those employees, these are the particular correction are required for the particular action. So they will take, they will work on that. So the ongoing feedback 
is comprehensive lab frequent following evaluation meeting in which superiors and subordinate may discuss progress towards objective and leading to more feedback. So totally the uh, through the performance evaluation or uh, the meeting in which the superior or subordinate they will discuss about the performance of the uh, performance towards the objective that was decided by the managers and they will further proceed they will do the further process they will lead to the more feedback basically performance appraisal after providing the feedback the next step is the appraisal so we know the performance that is a very necessary the appraisal is very necessary because through the appraisal they can find the uh, strength and weakness of the employee also a performance review or a routine review of the success of the ample To a uh, routine review, they can find out where they are going, how can they achieve that on their contribution level towards the objective of the organization, and they can review of the success of the organization. The organization. I hope you understand the process of the uh, IPO. Is there any doubt you can ask? Yes, is there any doubt? Okay, I hope nobody has any doubt. So, what are the advantages basically? So, advantages of MBO is it is a more useful for the managerial position. Only uh, this type of a matter for the performance appraisal is your use can use only for the managerial position, not for the others position. What are the disadvantages? Because every matter is more suitable for every job or every type of the, um, you can say that uh, responsibility job and designation. Allocation of merit pay may result in setting short term goals rather than including in the Because in the uh, goals on the basis of their actual personal goals. That's why we are saying it is a the setting short term goals rather than input and long-term goals. Benefits of management by objective. So what are the benefits? So let's understand. Management by objective help employee appreciate their own the job goals and the responsibility. So through the management by objective, the organization, the manager can appreciate, they can uh, appreciation about their job roles, their responsibility towards the, you can say, or the objectives basically. So this appreciation is also helpful to increase the morale of the employee, is also uh, motivate them towards achieving the goals of the organization. The key result area, KRA, as planned or specific to each employee, depending on their interest, education, qualification, and the specialization. So we know if we expect something from the employee and we comparison, there are some breaking between the result and the intensive the expectation because their result, they are totally depend on the their interest, their qualification, and their specialization. That means the interest of the area expert in the particular field, basically. The MBO approach usually results in better teamwork and the communication. So through the MBO, uh, it is also help in the MBO, those who are working for the same role of the organization. It creates a better teamwork between them, and there is no gap between the communication level or the or the level of the employees. Next, which provide the employee with a clear understanding of what is expected of them. That's why the helping the employee know about the, what is expected of them. Because before deciding the goals, before deciding the employee objective, they can clearly know, they can easy, it is easily understand what is expected of them basically. The supervisor set goals for every member of the team basically. 
that means it is decided by every member of the team basically and every employee is provided with a list of unit tasks that is according to the interest of area, their goals, their qualification and the specialization. Every employee is assigned unique goals because every employee has a different area, has a different task, so that's why they are, uh, they are assigned the unique goals. Hence, each employee feels indispensable to the organization and eventually develop a sense of loyalty to the organization. So how can they uh, show a loyalty when every employee feels indispensable to the organization? So they feel it develops a, a loyalty, seems a sense of the loyalty to the organization. They will give their 100% contribution for achieving the goals of the organization. Goal of the MBO manager helps ensure that subordinate goals are linked to the objective of the organization. That means it is a responsibility of the manager if they are deciding the goals of the organization, if they are deciding the goals of the employees. So that should be met basically. So, according to industrial area, they will create the goal. They will create their hundred percent to achieve the goals of the organization. Is there any problem, any doubt in the benefits of the management by the objective? Let me know. Is there any doubt? No. Okay. So we will continue with the three sixty degree feedback. What do you mean by the three sixty degree feedback? Have you heard about? The So this is the circle. What do you mean by the circle? This is the 360 degree in which lots of the members, that means here is the ample, here is the subordinate, peers, the customer, and the speakers also. So this is known as the 360 degree display. Is a 90 degree. 90 degree is like this one. Okay. What is the 180 degree? This is and the semicircle is known as the 180 degree and it will create it like full wall is known as the 360 degree. So in which that means in the 360 degree, this is a systematic collection of the the individual ample, those who are uh, how can we connect to every individual and the performance to the person A? Person A is working in a car. So, person B, C, D, E, F, G, H, Y, etc. So, working in a organization, you will see the pattern. So, if they are working together, if so, this means they will uh, they learn about each other very well rather than next with the other members, those who are not working in that department, those who belong to the other department. So the manager in which the manager connect to the performance data. Their team members, from their check, from their customers, peers, and the self also. So the person that is individual also get the chance to give the uh, feedback about uh, the performance from the particular member. So this technique is highly useful in terms of broader perspective, greater self development, and multi source feedback is useful. So please stick. Degree feedback is also known as a multi uh, multi source feedback. You can see, you can see uh, like it is a very useful in terms of the greater self development. So if there we are making somewhere we require to some development, 
require some training for the particular skills in particular area. So it will help in that basically. 360 appraisal is also useful to identify, to evaluate interpersonal skills of the company for the customer satisfaction, what are the level of the satisfaction of the customer, and skills basically. So it is a very helpful in criteria also. Of the 360 degree program. So basically, we have the three objective 360 degree appraisal to get a better view of the performance and perspective of the future leader. So through that, uh, Organization can know about the level of the performance of the company and how the, uh, this employee is particularly useful for the future also. To have a broad insight of the development needs of a main company, this, uh, the performance data which is collected by the uh, team member, they can also Identify if there are any development is required for their main part, at least those who are working for that organization. To collect more feedback, so to ensure justice to the job performed by the company. So they can collect to about the uh, further feedback, more feedback about like those uh, for their justice basically. That means it will more create the bias because we can see in which some performance appraisal it will create the bias, show the bias, a bias between the employees. So it will ensure that justice to the job performed by the employee, those who are working towards the goals of the organization. So, what are the members can appraise the 360 degree? Reason. The same, the person who is uh, who has the uh, feedback is collecting for whom, staff, their customer, their peers, their team member, or their teams basically. So these are the members that in 360 degree appraisal uh, can be collected by the six, seven, from the seven to eight members. Uh, it is a very helpful for. Uh, Building the team building skills for the customer satisfaction level, for uh, it is also helpful in interpersonal skills of the employee. Basically, what are the process for the 360 degree appraisal? SSC invite respondent that means the in which the whole is 360 degree member, those who are available, that is the peers, their customers. Uh, the self, their subordinate, their seniors, and their staff label also. Okay, so in which the all the SSC invited respondent and respondent submit their ass assessment about the uh, particular uh, employee, their feedback. SSC submit self assessment also because in which self assessment is also good opportunity to the person for the self assessment after the collection of this report from the report is submitted by the manager and through the report and the progress they will keep the review and feedback by the mentor and the trainer basically feedback about it will be the positive and the negative in which sometime also show the bias suppose if Some conflict. So it will obviously show the bias for the particular company. What are the possibilities? And this is a uh, we know everything has the pros and the cons. So this is we have some disadvantages. It is a very time consuming process. Why we are calling it the time consuming? Because in which all the SSC invited after that they will give the feedback. So all the that the 360 degree members has to collect it, the you can see the feedback, their opinion. So it will take the time. After that, the report will generate because it is It provides the bias opinion. So I've already told you 
why it will create the biological layer there may be the some uh, conflict between the animals less than 360 degrees center it may be sometimes like uh, it is created like it will correct uh, collecting the data from the 360 less than the 360 degree it may be possibility according to the organization it is a very complex processor rather than another method because if you take a few months time in which all the numbers is invited after then the process one by one by one we have to collect the data and create the report and give the feedback on the all things. Is there any doubt in the 360 degree uh, reason? Yes, if you have, you can ask. No, so okay, so continue about uh, like the behavior bars. Behavior, behavior. that means bars is a strong for behaviorally and for written skills basically. This is like the if this method is particular use for the um, for the individually behavior while doing to while doing the work in the organization. The problem of judgmental performance evaluation inherent in the traditional method of the performance evaluation led to some organization to go for objective evaluation by developing a technique known as the behavioral anchor rating scale. So through the in this method, if the employee in which the behavior of the employee is measured by the manager, so through this technique it will uh, that is uh, uh, that is uh, established in around the 1960s and known as the harsh basically. So Bars are description that will describe about the various degrees of the behavior. That means what they are behaving. So every job has a set of the behavior basically, like their behavior while doing uh, doing the job. It may be the positive or the negative. What are the behavior with regard to a specific performance in the organization? Which combines the benefits of the narrative critical incident and quantified written by entering the quantified scale with a specific behavior example of good or poor performance. So in which the quantity and the quantity to performance data is also, is also collected through this method because uh, through this method the quantity data should be call it uh, convert into the quality to and uh, do the analysis on that. The proponents of our claim that it offer better, more equitable appraisal than to other techniques of the performance we discussed so far. This is also a very good uh, technique because in this the set of the behavior of the employees because every job, every uh, task has a set of the behavior basically. The behavior of the employee, it may be the good behavior, it may be the bad behavior on which basis the employee which to be appraised. So this is the example. Performance is assessed along a scale with clearly defined scale point. One, two, three, four, five, basically. So let's take the example. A supervisor or for nurse indicates which scale point best describes the behavior of the nurse. So first is sometimes tells to follow doctors or the Often, impatient with difficult patient doesn't always follow hospital procedure. This is the one. Always follow doctor order occasionally impatient with difficulty patients rarely doesn't follow hospital procedure. Always follow doctor's order never impatient with a difficult patient always follow hospital procedure. The fourth one, always follow doctor's orders never impatient with a difficult patient help other nurses with difficult patient always follow hospital The last one is always follow doctor order availability with the doctor whenever needed, never in patient with the difficult patient, help other nurses with the difficult patient, always follow hospital processor and seizes patient steps basically. So in which we can say in the scale, the one, two, three, four, so we can see the level of the five is showing the best rather than others. 
it is going to the five. Five is basically showing it creating the group, the better rather than the other basic one. Okay, so this is the another, uh, you can say the matching for the modern matching. Let's continue with the assessment center basically. Assessment center. So next we have the assessment center. Assessment center typically involves the use of the working of social and formal environment, uh, test, exercises, assignment being given to a group of people to assist their competency to take higher responsibility in the future. So assessment center is like in which, uh, in which as the assignment is given a group of the employee and after the observer uh, observe the employee they can how they can are uh, they are competent to take the higher responsibility in the future basically so uh, this method is basically used when the employee want to uh, wants us uh, say want say about we want to feedback we want to also know about uh, our strength and weakness so this method is useful for that the trained evaluator observe and evaluate employee and on the basis of their task on the basis of their result they will rank them and the perform the sign job are evaluated on the job related characteristic so they can easily analyze about like what type of the what type of the development training they are required so according to uh, you they can do this thing next we have the last method of the modern method is basically the human resources accounting method human resources accounting we know those organizations who treat their human resources as a valuable asset. So, because every growth of the every organization, success of the every organization is always dependent on the employees basically. So, the human resources are always treated as a valuable asset in the every organization. This method is always trying to find out about what are their worth of these assets in the terms of the money. That means the cost is less than the human resources, or cost is the more than the human resources. In this matter, the performance appraisal of the employee is done in the terms of the course that the monetary terms and what's about the contribution level of the employee. What are the costing uh, by the organization and what are the contribution level for the, uh, of the employee towards the achieving the organization goals. The cost of the employee include like what type of the expense including like their compensation, their recruitment, their selection cost, their induction, training, development, medical facilities, and extra. So this all included uh, the their contribution include the total value added that is in the monetary terms basically. So here is the cost accounting means the cost means is like the monetary term. Like in which the monetary terms and the contribution level of the employee in the organization is the compared. The difference between the cost and the contribution due to the performance of the employee is measured through the human resources accounting method in which they can know about the worth of these assets in the terms of the money basically. So we have the few steps in the appraisal. Firstly, the organization need to uh, develop the standards 
about what are the level of the work standard of their employee. After that, communicate performance expectation. What they have expect from their employee. They after that, uh, the what they have actual result is given by the or, uh, employee to the organization. It will also measured by the manager. They will compare. Compare what they compare. Compare is like uh, between the actual performance and what they have expected. Discuss the appraisal with the employee. This is very necessary. They have to put all the feedback about it, maybe the positive, negative. It you can say it include about the strength and weakness of the employee. And after the uh, sharing the uh, appraisal with the employee, they will initiate the correction action which is taken by the organization. Suppose they have the positive, so they will appreciate their employee. If there are any lacking, if there are any correction is required, if there is skills training development is required, so they will take the initiative action. So I hope you understand the modern methods of the um, performance appraisal. So is there any doubt in the traditional method, modern method, any step? You can ask me right now. Next, we will uh, discuss about the few uh, subtopic of the performance appraisal in the next lecture. Thank you so much.